Snake is what I call my way of cooking. What I cook in the restaurant isn't what I cook at home. Cooking's got to be a laugh. It's got to be simple, it's got to be tasty, it's got to be fun. I suppose you could say it's stripping down the recipe to its bare essentials. No way, it's not meat, it's the food. Right, I've got to have something to eat before I do anything else. I'm going to have a bacon sarni for brekkie. So what I've done is I've got one of these grill pans, and they're quite cheap. I use it all the time now, just for, like, meat, fish. So easy. Anyway, look, I've got this bread, yeah? And um, I get them to slice it on the machine. But do you know you go in there and you get a normal bread loaf and you get it cut across into the normal rounds? Well, I do it the other way, and I say, can you put it through the, the long way? So what you get... Is there? <laughs> look at that. You fat. Have you got a big day today, then? I've got a huge day. I used to be in a band when I was from 14 to 17, then I moved to London to sort of work in the kitchens and stuff. And uh, we never really spoke... Well, we spoke on the phone every now and again, that was it. But about six months ago, they all moved to London. So we kind of got it back together again. We've got the first gig tonight, mate. What instrument do you play? I'm a cliché drummer. A little bit hyperactive. Talk rubbish most of the time. A bit fidgety. What can I say? Right, I'm just going to push this bacon to one side now, because that's cooked and it looks lovely. And I'm going to get this bread and I'm going to toast it on here. Instead of toasting it normally, I'm going to toast it on this grill pan. And that's going to suck up a little bit of all the or big sort of fat and the juices that comes up from the bacon. Do you always use white bread? No, I don't, well, yeah. I don't like brown bread. My mum always tried to get me on it, but I don't like it at all. Are the band coming back to eat this evening? Yeah, I'm going to cook... Um, a Thai green curry, which is pretty appropriate, really, because we're going to get a little bit bevved up tonight. You know, we're going to be very excited after the gig, and uh, curries are kind of like the English boys, or Essex boys, sort of ultimate after, after pub foods. Right, this is about done now. Well, I'm just going to eat this, and then um, I'll, I've got to go shopping and get stuck in, because I've got a lot to do. So what I'm going to make is a Thai green curry, yeah? And for that, we have to make a green paste. It's very quick to make, very quick to cook. Well, there's a little bit of preparation at this point. Um, so what we're going to do is we've got spring onions here. One, two, three. I use about five or six. Could you use normal onions? Yeah, use normal onions, shallots. And then lemongrass. Basically, what we want is the inside, where it's slightly white, slightly softer, loads of flavour, really zesty. So I'm just going to trim off the bottom and then just trim off the end until the tender kind of end of the root, which is about normally about halfway down. And you just want to strip the outside leaves off, because they they're quite tough. It's a really delicate flavour. Um, and like if you, even if you just put it in with steamed rice and stuff like that, the, the fragrance of it just really kicks all the way through. It's, it's lovely. Spread it in half and just cut it into about four bits. All of these together make a really good taste, yeah? But if there's an ingredient that you particularly like, like I'm getting quite partial to the old lime leaves, just up them a bit. But this is, this is a good one that I like. And then I need some garlic. Two or three, just peel them. We can leave them whole. Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks. And then we've got the ginger, yeah? The thing to look out for when you get the ginger is you want a nice, big, fat old hand of ginger because the, 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 sometimes you have to root around these poxy little bits and they're just stringy and dried up and horrible. You want a nice, thick bit and just rip it off. You can peel it with a peeler or use a knife. Right, so we want about that much, you know, about a tablespoon's worth. And that's another thing done. All right, we've got limes, yeah? Lovely, lovely limes. Just peel off a little bit of the skin because the skin's quite fragrant and there's no, you know, no point in chucking it away. I've got these really pucker chilies. I'm going to use about four or five. Again, up it or lower it as to what you like. I'm just going to take the ends off and I'm going to cut them in half. Do you think there's quite a macho element as to how hot you like your food? Yeah, well, um, I suppose when you go out with the boys and you get a bit bevoid, it does some... Well, it's been known to turn into a bit of a com uh, competition, you know, who can have the, the hottest curry, but... I just love chilies, though, so much. The really, really hot curries, they use the whole chilli, which are these seeds. But it's hot, but it doesn't really taste the chilli. If you take the seeds out, you get a nice warmth there, but the actual taste of chilli comes through. 
All right, so next we're going to use lime leaves. And they're kind of unusual. You, you, you get them in every single Thai or Chinese uh, supermarket, and you're starting to get them in the supermarkets now. But these make such a difference. They've got a really authentic flavour. And I just want a little handful, about that much. And you can buy them in bags like this, and you can freeze them, and they keep so well in the freezer. Take any big bits of stalk that are off, and you just roll them up like a little cigar, and um, just, just chop them across just to help the machine a bit. Right, so I've got this coriander here, and you know, you want about sort of three or four really good handfuls of this, so that bunch is perfect. Um, and basil, just rip the stalks off, leave some of them on, um, and we want about, you know, two really good handfuls of basil. So we've got lots of fragrance there, you know. Coriander seeds, about a little handful, or, you know, tablespoon and a half. And just crack them in half, you don't want to smash them up to a powder. Lovely. All right, so this is the easy bit. Just take it over to the mixer. Get me olive oil. I'm just going to put my ginger and the kind of the rougher things, the sort of tougher things. So I'll get the garlic in there, the ginger, the spring onions. The things that are going to give the machine a little bit more work. To just pulse it up basically to as fine as you can. Add a good, good pinch of salt and a bit of pepper. Coriander in. Coriander seeds. Right, so just cut these limes in half and uh, just squeeze all the juice in there. All these herbs, straight in, just push it all down. Put about two tablespoons worth, uh, three tablespoons worth of oil in. Just leave it go for a couple of minutes. Basically, that's done now. It smells absolutely outrageous. W will you use all that paste for the curry? I probably will use all this paste because I want, you know, I want to put coconut milk in. I want lots of great, uh, sort of juice. Um, but I tell you what, even if I'm cooking for myself, I still cook this much because all you have to do is jar it in an airtight container, a bit of oil over the top, so it's, the air doesn't get to it, and uh, it keeps for weeks in the fridge. All right, I've got these really nice chicken breasts. Yeah, they're free range, of course, but you know, get what you can. Could you use the green paste for any different sort of curry? You don't have to use chicken. The green paste? Oh, God, the green paste. You can do so much of this. I mean, you can basically... You can uh, marinate, like, kebabs or something and just, just have the paste on its own and, like, barbecue it in the summer. Just put some lime juice over it afterwards. Um, use it with prawns to do sort of prawn curries. Um, and sort of, you know, just, just brush bits of fish with it and just sort of grill it really quickly. So I'm just going to cut them at a sort of angle, quite big bits, and that will make a, sort of a big bit of surface area so it can have a nice marinade clinging to it. I'm going to take about, I suppose, you know, a, a spoonful, a couple of tablespoons of the, mat, of the paste and just put that in there. I'm going to put the chicken in with it and I'm just going to toss it over and I only want it to lightly coat it. Oh, so you don't put the chicken in all the marinade? No, because I just I want the flavour to impregnate into the meat, but I also want to just give it that, initially when I cook it, I want to give that, that sear in the wok. And, and if I've got too much of this in, it's going to boil. Lovely. So this, I want to give this about 20 minutes to marinade. And that's the minimum you want to give it, really. Um, but anything from 20 minutes to two hours is great. Right, so I'm going to cook the curry now. It's very, very simple. I've got a hot wok. Get your meat ready, get your paste ready. Coconut milk, nearly forgot. Put my oil straight in, put it from around the sides. What sort of oil is that? Just normal sort of vegetable oil. In with the meat. And just like push, push it about. And we're just going to cook it like this for about sort of two, three minutes, just so we're searing a little bit of colour in, and that, that's nice for flavour. If you didn't have a wok, could you do it in a saucepan or something? Yeah, of course you can. Do it in, a, in like a casserole type pan. Get it really hot again. Exactly the same. And then I'm going to get this paste, get it all in there, and this is where really you stop frying it. You start sort of, you start boiling it now. So just smear over that green paste, just for like 30 seconds or something. And then we'll add this coconut milk. That's brilliant. And just stir it all in real slow. Right, so basically I'm just going to bring it to the boil. Right, let it simmer for about 12, 13 minutes, just until the chicken's nice and tender. And, uh, and that's it, it's done. Just season it to taste, a bit of lime for a zing, get some sort of shaved um, coconut in there, some chopped um, pistachio nuts and some 
coriander, just to freshen it up at the last minute. And I think the band are really, really going to like. I'm going to think they're going to love it. I'm going to make this really excellent salad that goes with the green curry. Um, the green curry being quite fragrant and hot, um, and this salad being quite clean. So what I've got here is just some really nice, deep red, perfectly ripe cherry tomatoes. And I'm just cutting them in quarters. You can do them in halves if you want. I've got a, um, a fresh coconut. We don't want any of that desiccated stuff. Um, and as you can buy these absolutely anywhere, markets, supermarkets, whatever, um, it's much better and much more authentic to use these. Um, if you want to keep the milk, you can. We, put, we only actually need half a coconut. I can save this and scrape it onto the curry later or just keep it, do something else with it. So just cut it up into bits, slice it as thinly as possible, in any old fashion really. But you can see it's such a wicked colour, really tasty. Um, it tastes so much different to the dry stuff, don't even think about it. It's different textures as well, it's not just taste. Lovely. Right, so just chuck this in. Next thing we need is we've got cucumber. And I, want, I, want, I need about that half a cucumber. Just peel this and then I'm just going to cut it in half. And we want to remove this little bit in here, which is really watery, tastes of kind of nothing really. Um, you really don't want it. You, don't, you can get a spoon, scoop it out, or you can get a knife. Just go in at an angle very gently. Go in at an angle here, just kind of turf it out and just kind of use your fingers so you can see all that. Just water, you don't want that. I quite like to sort of cut it in half again. Just do it in thin, kind of lengthways bits like that and then just cut it in half again. I just kind of think that size is perfect. Same, you know, you want it the same as a coconut-ish. What else might you serve this salad with? Um, well, it's a very refreshing salad, so you want to do it with light things. Things like a, a simply grilled piece of fish, you know, white fish preferably, um, simply grilled chicken, um, cheeses, you know, feta cheese, ricotta, mozzarella, really nice. Yeah, just, just simple things really. Um, so what we want now, I've got some nice basil, really fragrant that I bought and I've washed it. I just want about that much and that's, I know it's quite strong and it's really fresh and we're going to get loads and loads of flavour out of that. So just, just slice it up. Um, get that stuck in there. Now you smell it already, do you know what I mean? It's lovely jubbly. Could you use any other herbs? Yep, um, you could use coriander, which is lovely. Coriander and basil. Um, but I've got a lot of coriander in the green curry and I want to keep the flavours separate, so I think that makes sense, do you know what I mean? Right, so what we want to do now is dress, dress it like a normal salad. A good pinch of pepper, a good pinch of salt. And I'm going to use limes, two limes. And that's going to give it a really, as opposed to lemon, it's going to be really zingy. Something that will help get the juice out is just to put your weight on it and roll it like that. Roll it off. And if you smell your hands, you've got that fragrance of the skin straight away. And you could peel the skin, finely chop it, and just put it in a pan with some, some fish, pan fried fish or something. And that, that'll work brilliantly. But I don't want the skin. I just want the juice. And just shove the hands inside and give it a good old squeeze. Get in there. My son. And then. We want to put about the same amount of olive oil as lime juice. Um, and now just give it a little toss over. Or you can mix it, or get your hands stuck in. Just toss it over, and the colours are amazing. And what you want to do now is just put your finger at the bottom where all the kind of dressing is dripping down to, and taste it. A little bit more salt, just so everything is like perfectly. A bit of pepper. And I think. An optional now, which I think I'll go for, is um, a little bit of chilli. Just split them in half and scrape the seeds out the middle. It gives it a little bit of heat, not, not hot, I'm not, I'm not talking anywhere near blowing your head off. But what I'm talking about is a really, really nice sort of warmth that works with the cucumbers and the tomatoes and the salt and the lime and it just, I, th I think it brings it all together really well. Yeah, this can sit quite happily for a bit of time, letting all the, all the sort of flavours come out of the, the chilies and everything to combine a bit. And uh, it's, you know, it's a really colourful thing. In the middle of the table, 
Lovely. The perfect rice. And I know everyone knows how to make rice, but this is a special way that I use to make it really light and really fluffy, and I like it. Boil up the rice in boiling salted water for about four or five minutes, and then at that stage the rice is just slightly undercooked. Then I put a little bit of water back in the pan, put the colander over it, and whack it back on there, a bit of tin foil over, and basically the water's draining off now and it's going to come to the boil and start steaming again. And that's, that's going to really help to make it lovely and light. And take about five minutes and then it'll be perfectly ready to eat. What I'm going to make now is a thing called tempura, which basically is a really, really pucker, crispy batter. And you can, you can deep fry like vegetables or meat or fish, but I'm going to do vegetables today with dipping sauces. And I think it's the dipping sauce that really, you've got that big crunch and you've got the lovely inside, but the dipping sauce is what you want. And I'll show you how to make it. It's very, very simple and you can vary it any old way. I've got rice wine vinegar here. Um, rice wine vinegar is slightly more mild than like white wine vinegar, but I mean, you can use it. What you've got to do is sweeten it. It's very simple, you just do it to your own taste. So if you just get a little bowl, I'm going to put in about half a pint, okay? I'm going to add about three kind of dessert spoons of sugar to this, and you just stir it until it goes clear. You just keep tasting, and what you want to do is take that harshness out of the vinegar. So it's be just beautiful for dipping. Um, I'll put a little bit more in, I think. Yeah. Right, so you've got your sweet and sour there, that's there. What we need to do now is get loads and loads of flavour. I've got coriander here, just a little handful. And, I mean, this is how easy it is, you know. I'm just going to chop it up and whop it in there. And I want some chilies. Just scrape out most of the seeds. How did the, um, how did the gig go? The gig was superb, mate. Honestly, it was such a cracker. And it was, yeah, it was a real laugh. Got a bit sweaty, though. I like to get into it a bit. Right. Kind of finely-ish chopped. In it goes. Now, garlic's quite important, actually. Not much, but just a little bit of garlic. Do you know what I mean? Um, not garlic that's going to punch you around the face, but garlic that just kind of changes the flavour. It gives it that kind of... I'm, I'm talking like a wine merchant now. <laughs> and I'll probably use a quarter. So I just finely chop it. And that'll be enough to make it completely taste different. Give it a good old stir around. Right. Yeah, wicked. Those flavours are really strong. And a bit of salt and pepper, always important. And that tastes all right now, but give it like 10 minutes or give it an hour, and it'll be like a tea bag. There'll be loads of flavours all over the place. So that's the dipping sauce done? Yeah. End of story. I'm just going to put it in some little bowls, and um, I'll put them in the middle of the table, and they can just dip away. Now I'm going to make the batter. Very important, you've got to make it last minute. All you need is corn flour and plain or strong flour. And what I need to do is I need double normal flour to corn flour. So it's one cup of corn flour to two lots of normal flour. Lovely. Right, OK. We need water, OK? Um, but we need ice cold water, and if, if you've got it hanging about, fizzy uh, mineral water or soda water seems to give it a little bit of an edge. Um, but if not, you know, cold, very cold ice cold water is perfect. It has to be ice cold. It just helps it. It's like, imagine we're going to deep fry it, yeah? Very hot. Imagine something really cold hitting that, it's just going to come and go straight away, it's going to make it really crunchy. So. Okay water, slush it around a bit, let it get cold. Now, this is the important bit about tempura. We're not going to let it, we're not going to make it and let it rest like, like normal batters, right? We want to make it right at the last minute. We're not going to whip it with a, a whisk so it's really smooth. I'm going to use like the back of a spoon or a chopstick. And what that will give you is kind of a lumpy batter. And I know that sounds really freaky, but the little lumps help to make it really crispy and that is quite characteristic of Tempura in general, really. Right, so this, this water's really cold now, so what I'm going to do is just pour it in. 
Add it bit by bit. Stir it in slowly. <laughs> you want it to be about double cream, just slightly thicker than double cream consistency. <laughs> Lovely, that's perfect, absolutely stunning. Right, so I've got, a, I've got a wicked selection of vegetables here. I've got green beans, I've got chilies, I've got mushrooms, I've got courgettes, I've got asparagus, I've got sweet potato, I've got onions, I've got broccoli, you know, herbs, little corns. So just get a bit of everything in there. You don't want to overload the frying oil, so just kind of do little bits at a time. And use your, your chopstick to kind of just fold it all over, just to coat it. You know, shake off any excess if there is any. And this oil, I've got oil here, and it's been heating up slowly. This is at 200, 220 degrees. If you haven't got a thermometer, you can get them for about five quid. All you have to do is dip it in, and if it kind of starts to fry quite fast, that's fine. If it's a really vicious fry, you don't want that. And if it's not frying at all, then it's too cold. So just keep your eyes peeled. Kind of flick it away from you, just so that if any, like, splashes of oil come in, they don't go anywhere near you. What sort of oil is it? It's just normal, like, sunflower oil. So you get your first load in quick, otherwise they'll all be cooked at different times. What's your favourite vegetable in there, do you think? I reckon my favourite must be the chilies, the mushrooms and the sweet potatoes. I just love it. It's so good. So, so tasty. Right, so I'm just going to use one of these things just to turn it over a bit. And just don't be vicious with it, but just kind of like turn them over, make sure they're not sticking, move them about a little bit. And I can just feel already they're really, really crispy. The only thing that you, determines how you should cut things up is like, for instance, that batter cooks in about two and a half, three minutes, okay, to be perfectly crisp and slightly golden. Right, and things like the asparagus tips and the courgettes and the chilies, they're all going to be perfectly edible in, in that time. But things like sweet potatoes, which are quite, quite hard, um, you, because of the three minutes, you've got to cut it to a thickness which is going to be, you know, nice and edible in three minutes, you know. So something like that, you know, sort of like a, a thick kind of crisp. So these are ready. So just shake off the excess oil. And then just lay it out on the on the paper. Wicked. I'm really pleased with these. So basically what I'm gonna do now is put a little bit of salt on them, because I think that makes them lovely jubbly. And just test one. Mmm. Hot and quick, boo. Right. Mmm. Perfect. Right, I'm gonna get on now and cook these in batches. And I'm gonna keep feeding the old troops because they're ravenous now, so I'm gonna crack on.